Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn how you can support this exciting project, please visit storytimefromspace.com. Hi, everyone. I'm astronaut Mike Hopkins on board the International Space Station, and it's story time in space. Now, we're here in the cupola uh, overlooking the Earth, a beautiful scene that you'll be able to see as, uh, as we're going by and we're reading the story. And to stay, today's story is about, again, our friend Max. And Max today is going to go to Mars. So, again, these are books written by Jeffrey Bennett. Uh, this is a science adventure with Max the dog, and it's illustrated by Alan Okama Okamoto. And there's a note from the author in here again. This is a story of how Max the dog helped humanity take the next giant leap far beyond the moon to the wondrous planet Mars. And he actually writes to children around the world, one of you will be the first person to walk on Mars. Reach for the stars. It had been only a few years since Max and his friend Tori helped start the moon colony. Thousands of people had already visited the moon, but no one had yet traveled beyond. Tori and Max stayed busy at home on Earth. Tori was in school, and Max would play all day. They loved to go for evening walks, especially when the sky was clear and dark. Tori could always spot the planets among the stars. Sometimes, when Mars was bright, she imagined that it was calling out to them inviting a girl and her dog to visit. And you can see Tori and Max here looking up at the night sky and Mars. Tori got the phone call when Max was out doing his famous merry-go-round trick. As a puppy, he'd learned to spin the merry-go-round on his own, jumping on and off and sometimes just riding around. He still loved the trick, and kids usually came to ride with him. It's Commander Grant, said Tori. They want a dog to go along on the first trip to Mars. Max just kept on playing. Tori was both happy and sad, happy that Max would get to go on such a great adventure, sad because she knew that this time he'd have to go without her. Tori remembered visiting a scale model of the solar system in Washington, D.C., she learned that even when it's closest to Earth, Mars is about 150 times as far away as the moon. The trip to Mars would take too long for a girl still in school. There's Max doing his famous trick with the merry-go-round. And then this is in Washington, D.C., where she remembers how far away Mars is. It's a long way. Tori thought Max should know a little about his destination. Listen carefully, Max. We call Mars the red planet because it looks like a reddish dot in the night sky. Long ago, people of many cultures gave Mars different names and made up stories about it. The name Mars comes from the ancient Roman god of war. Max stood very still, staring right past Tori. Good, I can see that you're listening, she said. So do you think Max is listening to Tori, or is he watching, uh, the, what is it, a squirrel that's up in the tree? Maybe the squirrel. Well, Max, it gets even more interesting, she continued. A hundred years ago, a few scientists thought there were great cities on Mars. Some people even worried about Martians invading Earth. Can you imagine that, Tori laughed. Max was definitely imagining something. Let's see, can you see what Max was imagining? Tori's imagining Martians. Max is still thinking about that squirrel. Tori took Max to a science museum where they walked through an exhibit of Mars. We know a lot about Mars now, she explained, because many nations have sent spacecraft to Mars. But none of these spacecraft have carried any people or animals. That's why your trip is going to be so exciting. Tori suddenly became more serious. Max, there aren't any cities or Martians on Mars, but you could still help us make one of the greatest discoveries in history. 
Mars is a cold, dry planet today, continued Tori, but scientists think that Mars had lakes and rivers a long time ago. There might still be water underground. And if there's water, well, maybe there's life. Martian life would probably be too small to see without a microscope. Still, if you found even the tiniest living creature on Mars, we'd finally know for sure that we are not alone in the universe. Max sniffed excitedly at the floor, proving that he was well equipped for the search for microscopic life. There they are in the museum. And look, Max smells something. As launch day approached, Tori and Max left Earth and returned to the moon colony, where the Mars ship was waiting. Tori could not hide her tears as she gave Max a big goodbye hug. She knew that Mars lines up with Earth in its orbit only about every two years. Max and the crew would have to stay on Mars almost that long before they could return home. Commander Grant saw the concern on Tori's face. Don't you worry, he said. We tested everything over and over again. It will be a long trip, but we'll all be fine. The Mars ship quickly left the moon and Earth far behind. Max and the astronauts were traveling faster than anyone in history, but the trip would still take more than four months. It was disorienting to be so far from any place, and they had no sense of up or down as they floated weightlessly in the spaceship. The astronauts didn't have much to do on the long trip, which was one reason they brought Max along. His weightless antics pr provided endless entertainment, and he was very helpful when someone felt homesick. There's nothing quite as comforting as petting a dog. So there you can see they're on the moon, getting ready to launch, and then here they are up in their spaceship heading to Mars, and Max is helping entertain everyone. Back on Earth, Tori had a special privilege. Each day before school, she received a private video phone call from the crew. During a call one day, about halfway through the voyage to Mars, Commander Grant pointed his camera out the window to show Tori the tiny Earth and Moon in the distance. That's where you are, he said. Not just me, she thought. Every person who has ever lived grew up on that tiny blue dot. You can see that tiny blue dot right there. The astronauts were very happy when Mars finally began to loom large ahead of them. They had all spent time on the moon, but this was different. Mars is much bigger than the moon, though still much smaller than Earth. It even has two moons of its own, named Phobos and Deimos, but they are so small that they look more like rocks than worlds. The descent to Mars was scary but fun. For a few long minutes, the ship blazed through the thin Martian atmosphere. Then the crew opened the ship's parachutes to slow down. Finally, they used small rockets to zero in on the landing site. The equipment for their base camp was already there because it had been sent to Mars two years earlier. After four months in a small spaceship, Max and the astronauts were eager to get outside. It looked almost Earth-like, but they knew they'd have to wear spacesuits to survive. The crew spent a few weeks recovering from the effects of weightlessness and preparing their base camp. They tended to the plants in the greenhouses. They checked the air and water recycling systems. Most important, they set up a factory to make the rocket fuel they would need to leave Mars. As usual, Max entertained everyone. He loved playing in the weak gravity of Mars, where he could jump three times as high as he could on Earth, but only half as high as he could on the moon. So here they are on Mars. We've got a little rover here. Looks like they're growing food over here. It's like a pretty neat setup. After a while, the astronauts began to take longer trips from base camp. They could travel for weeks in their pressurized rover. One of their first trips took them to a historical site the robot rover named Spirit, which landed on Mars way back in 2004. It was still right where it had stopped many years ago, but it was now coated with Martian dust. Max regarded it warily, as if it might start rolling again at any moment. At every stop, the crew collected rocks for scientific study. 
By figuring out what the rocks were made of and how long ago they formed, the astronauts learned about the history of Mars. Max had a special job. His spacesuit had an attachment that let him sniff at rocks or the air outside. He was trained to bark if he caught the scent of any sign of life. Commander Grant showed him rock after rock, nothing. If there had ever been life here, Max wasn't finding it. So there's Spirit. And here you can see Max sniffing. As the months passed, Max and the astronauts saw many amazing places on Mars. They spent weeks exploring the rim of the Great Vallis Mar Marineris, a canyon that is almost as long as the United States is wide. The steep canyon walls dropped so far that it was difficult to see the bottom, and only in a few places could they see all the way across to the other side. In those places, the view was stunning, especially in the morning when low clouds formed in the Martian sky. Staring across the abyss, it was easy for the crew to imagine that they were back home on Earth, overlooking a giant version of the Grand Canyon. They were getting a little homesick after all. How they wished they could just take off their spacesuits and breathe in fresh air. But when they saw the tiny blue earth shining in the Martian dawn, they'd remember that home was nearly a hundred million miles away. Their last planned outing took them to Olympus Mons, an ancient volcano that is the biggest mountain in the solar system. Max led the way as they hiked up the steep slopes around its base. They had time to explore only a little bit of the Great Mountain before it was time for the long drive back to base camp. That was when disaster almost struck. A huge Martian dust devil swept straight across the rover's path. Inside, it sounded like someone was sandblasting their car. They had to stop driving because they couldn't see anything out the windows. Luckily, the storm soon blew past, but they decided to alter their course to avoid other storms. Their new route gave them the chance to make one last stop. It was an ancient riverbed not far from another volcano. They parked the rover and got out to explore. And then it happened. So here they are at the volcano. And then here's that dust storm that hit them. Commander Grant nearly jumped out of his spacesuit when the sound of Max barking suddenly blasted into his earphones. He quickly turned and saw Max sniffing and digging at the dirt in the bottom of the dry riverbed. Commander Grant grabbed the drill and ran over to Max. He drilled down and down, bringing up rock from deep underground. It was wet. Max and the crew returned to base camp as quickly as they could. In the base camp lab, Commander Grant used his microscope to look into the tiny watery holes within the rock. He could barely contain his excitement as he realized what he was seeing. Max, he shouted, you did it. You discovered life on Mars. Good job, Max. Max was a hero once again. On Earth, people planned celebrations to greet Max and the crew. On Mars, the crew prepared to leave. They made sure the base camp was properly closed so it would be ready for the next Mars explorers. Then they returned to their rocket and blasted off for home. It took three months to reach the moon, where doctors checked the crew for good health and scientists stored the Mars samples for future study. Then Max and the crew returned home to Earth. Tori had missed Max so much, he'd been gone for more than two years, and she knew that he was getting old for a dog. She was very proud of him, and she wanted to treasure all the time he had left in his dog's life. Max was glad to be back too. He'd traveled farther and seen more than any dog in history. But he knew one thing as he looked out at the trees and squirrels and blue sky. There's no place like home and no planet like Earth. Tori seemed to know what he was thinking. Someday I'll make a trip to Mars too, she said, and maybe even to a planet beyond Mars. But I don't think we'll ever find another world quite as wonderful as this one. There they are sitting looking at the sky. And that's the end of the book. It's a very good book, Max Going to Mars. And I look forward to the next time that we get to read together.